Hello, welcome to MCFC 9320 Pubcast. Uh, tonight, as well as the normal gang, we've got Tony. Greetings, Tony. Thanks for joining us, buddy. No problem at all. Thank you very much. Uh, did you go to the match yesterday? I, I had my uh, son's 18th birthday, so I'm, unfortunately I had to miss it yesterday. But um, maybe it was one of those that was I was probably glad to miss, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just wish I was invited to that 18th, mate, because it was absolutely <laughs> shocking yesterday. Yeah. It's funny that, uh, Andy, because we, we were all there. We were wondering where you were. Me? Yeah. I was there. What, the 18th? It's debatable. Oh, no. No, I, I wasn't at the I wasn't at the 18th, obviously, but I wish I was there. Uh, no, <laughs> see, see, I'll let you kick off, Riz. Absolutely shocking. And in my humble opinion, and I know Anne Marie will take me to task on this. Yesterday there was only Bernardo and Stones there who were actually up for it yesterday. The rest of them was shocking and already in Qatar. Um, I don't know whether they had colds or not, but they were definitely um There'll be people who say that this is wrong and the professionals and blah, blah, blah. I'd say for the last maybe month, there's been a lot of players whose heads been at the top. Um, they need... We, this, this break can't come soon enough for us because the main reason is not the fact that we've got formations wrong and things like that. We're just not... We're not on it at the moment. We're not on the pace. We're not on the... the the tempo's wrong. Um, I think Pep's trying to, uh, you know, I don't like speaking for him, but I think deep down he's trying to keep them happy because he doesn't want one of them missing out on the World Cup because of something he's done or whatever. I don't know, might be wrong on that. Um, but I definitely think that the players aren't, aren't on it. Once his World Cup's over, I think we'll see the proper city. Yeah, um, John, you know, jo John. With, with regards to what Riz is saying as well and stuff, what I've read since yesterday, uh, I've seen all the excuses flying around. Yet, yeah, we're playing three games a week. Well, so is everybody else the way the schedule's been, you know, because because of the World Cup. Everyone's been playing, you know, the, the Caribou Cup matches, uh, two matches a week. Uh, Arsenal did OK yesterday. Liverpool did OK yesterday. The Rags got over the line. So did Spurs. So I just think it's uh, some City fans... Sort of like um, making excuses, do you? Yeah, definitely. They are making excuses. There's no reason for them not to perform. Um, they've done that for the last... Oh, I've got, how many seasons they've done playing three games a week? Um, there's no reason for them to be tired. Yesterday, they just looked totally off it. I, I can only... In my opinion, the only person that actually shone yesterday was Bernardo. And that's when he actually got moved to the middle, where he should be. He, 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 did not, he did little bits on the wing, but he's more effective in the middle. But it's like Kevin De Bruyne couldn't pass a ball yesterday. He couldn't pass wind yesterday. It was terrible. And Brentford, people are saying, oh, they came with the master plan. Yeah, the same master plan that every other team does. And we seem to beat them. But yesterday, when you don't work as hard as you're the team, then you will come up against things like that. And, it, you know, it, we got what we deserve yesterday. Nothing. No, no. See, no, no. Normally, I would say that. Like, like normally, I would say that. But what, Amory, you know, John's just, John's just said that about, you know... Um, he was only Bernardo. I, I do think Stones, he played OK yesterday. He, I thought he was our best defender. However, what John just said about um, Brentford, you know, we got, got what we deserved. I'm sick of the time wasting. At certain points yesterday, the goalkeeper was taking 35 seconds for a goal kick. Yeah, completely agree with you on the time wasting, Andy. It was a joke. And every time we kind of built up any momentum, one of their players would go down as well for no reason. You know, so I, I agree with the time wasting. I don't agree with you about John Stones. I think him and Akanji were lethal together yesterday. I think that we, we could have, we should have known what was going to happen within the first 10 minutes of the game. We could have been two or three down. And if it wasn't for Edison, um, 
And for me, it's disappointing as a match going fan, paying my way every week to go and watch them. You know, I, I feel like they really let us down yesterday and that's what disappoints me more. The fact that they didn't, that it was as if they didn't care what the result was. They just wanted to get the 90 minutes out of the way, injury free, so they can go away. And that's not good enough. And I'm amazed that Pep would have been better off playing kids yesterday. Um, Bang on the money. I was, I was, I was hoping the same, Anne Marie. When I seen Lewis, war, you know, warming up and stuff like that, and uh, Sergio Gomez, I just thought, you know, summer, I would, I would bring him on. Even, and I'm no, I would have even brought Maris on yesterday because he's not going to the World Cup either. I just, I just felt we was lacking every, everything yesterday. You could, you could feel it even. Be, and I'm not just saying it. If, if Mike or, or my lad Adam was here now, on the, on the attack. Before Brentford scored the second, I went, here we go. Seconds later, boom. You could you could just you could just feel it yesterday that, that we was gonna yeah. get beat. But the other thing for me yesterday was and and it I don't know, it's starting to baffle me a bit with Pep. Why, when we've got a left back who's who's you know not bad, I don't think, Gomez, why not play him and put Cancello out on the right? You know. We're creating problems for ourselves by playing John Stones out there because both him and Akanji made quite a few good moves forward but then didn't know what to do with the ball. And it, it just found the whole game frustrating yesterday. And the other thing was Pep, you know, last season and pre-season wanting these five subs. He got the five subs, yet we only made one substitution yesterday when the game was crying out for a Grealish as well. But, so, but, but if Grealish would have come on, would we have been in the, uh, I'm, I'm already in the World Cup scenario, Stan? Um, yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to be um, saying that people are going to be off the game because they're going to the World Cup, it's not going to be any different, is it? He's going to be in the same, you know, you'll have the same mindset. I just think yesterday was one of those days. Every year you get some team coming along that will do the low block, they'll defend, they'll score an early goal. I think it was Palace last year. Um, everything seems to go against us. The bar wasn't great, the ref wasn't great, the time wasted. You can't get players in between the defence and the midfield because there's no space. They've got 10 men behind the ball. They've got 10 men in the penalty area. And then it's up to us to do it. We're a top-class club. You know, we're going to get it. Um, we can't get round it. So I think we're always going to have the odd result like yesterday. The fact that it's come before the World Cup, probably not happened. I think most people would want to go on the plane. Um, yeah, the professional, but the human beings as well, aren't they? Uh, I'm, I'm going to make so, so on a, Stan's just said there, you know, we get a game like that. I think. This has been coming over the past few games because we've not been we've not been brilliant over the past few games. I'd say I'd say I'd go back as far as say a month. Yeah, I I think there has been some games there where we've relied on, um, well we're going to score, so therefore we will just kind of work through the games. And I think obviously there's been that reliance on Harlem because we think that basically he scores every week. Um, and yesterday for me, um, again. I did watch it, but obviously I weren't there at the game. I did. I did manage to uh, uh, catch it um, on on TV and stuff. Um, but what I, I what I wanted to say really in terms of the defence, he's done this before. The reason he put John Stones there was to add extra height because he knew what they were like um, from an attacking point of view. So by having that extra height there, that's why he went with what he went with, as far as I can see. Um, but there were times later on, as we, as probably Anne Marie said, and that uh, we, we could have changed things, uh, and we were kind of sort of, well, we'll sus, we'll we'll get something, we'll get something. Now, obviously, Foden's goal was great, and you thought, right, well, that's that's it. Now we get going, and we just never did. Um, the second half pretty much was was like the first half; it was just in bits. It Tony, was just, Tony yeah, did you did you did you see just before Foden's goal? He, he, he actually bottled out of a challenge on well, that's the way I look at uh, on the on the left. I forget what player he bottled out with, and you could see him just just pulling out of it, and it was just like I ain't getting injured. Yeah, it yeah. Come up, 
he come up with that brilliant goal, but do you know something? It gr- great strike, but I've I've seen that there was a game last week where Foden give up uh, against, uh, against against Fulham. Foden give up on a ball, and Pep was going off his head. And it's it's just not been right, has it? No, 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 no. I, I think it was Rico Henry. I think on the on the uh, on the uh, left because it actually he was probably disappointed as Ivan Tony was in the fact that he wasn't included um, going there. So he was definitely up for the game. And you could see, obviously, that Tony was up for the game as well. Uh, and to be honest, sneakily, I fancied Tony to score yesterday. Obviously, I didn't want him to get two, but I did fancy him to score because it was just set up for him to do that um, in that particular game. But what I was really frustrated with was that we we resorted, um, and I don't like to say it is, that we resorted to sort of cheap tricks by going down. Um, De Bruyne was at it. Um, one or two other players were at it. I think what, what's happened there, they were told that they're very physical in terms of defending. So they're saying that when you receive a touch in the back or anything like that, go down. And we and Harlan did it a few times. One or two others did it. And it gets sussed. Yeah, you know, the referee was watching for it all the time. Disappointed with that. And I think that we don't need to do that. We don't need to resort to that, uh, throwing ourselves on the ground. Uh, it frustrated me a little bit, to be honest. Yeah, but it's, with regards to stuff like that, I, you know, I've, I'll be honest, I've not, I've not watched Match of the Day back or any anything like that. V, VAR, you know, is coming into question yet again. Not just, not just with City matches, but we'll, we'll, you know, let's just talk about the City matches and stuff like that. Was there any, was there anything yesterday where you felt VAR got it wrong? Um, again, <clears throat> again. Well, it's difficult when you're at the game, isn't it? You can see stuff, and especially where I'm positioned in the ground, it's. It's, it's, the, the angles aren't brilliant. Um, but I have seen some clips and stuff. I don't watch Match of the Day when we get beaten. No, me too. I don't do either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I've not bought any newspapers. I've not I've had a media blackout. So yeah, <laughs> makes me feel sick. Yeah. Um, so I've not seen that, but I have seen clips on YouTube and I've seen stuff like that. And um, there's a couple, there's one instance where the guy got, uh, one of our players got shoved in the back. In the in the penalty in the box, um, it was like um, a WWE <laughs> wrestling move, um, Big Daddy Slam or whatever you want to call it. And yeah. to be honest with you, um, if that's not a penalty, then I don't know what is, and I don't know how VAR. You know, there's stuff that's marginal, and I get that. You know, there's always going to be that when you analyse it to the minute degree. There's always going to be stuff when you slow it down. But that, it, if it was in the if it was on the field of play, if you like it'd be a free kick. So if that's the case, why is it not a penalty? And that exactly. was just the obvious one. There was a yeah. few others that you could look at. I think there was two or three incidents where we had yeah. good shouts for penalties and we didn't get... The handball um, was a definite penalty. Yeah. Yeah. So, no doubt about that was a penalty. His hand was uh, on the line or over the line. And if you're on the line, it's, a, it's at the penalty area. Yeah, but there was something like that last week, though, Stan, wasn't there? I forget what game it was now when when it might have been one of the Rags games where the ball hit somebody's hand when he was stood on the when he was stood on the on the line and it wasn't given because his hand was outside in a natural outside, position. Yeah. Yeah, outside the eight. His hand wasn't his hand was behind him and his 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 backside was on the line and his hand was behind him. It was a penalty. Absolutely no chance you could not give that. It's it's happening more and more now, though, John. Isn't it? You know, it's, it, as I say, not just not just city matches, but like there, there was one. Uh, where was it t- today? Oh, the uh, the 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 Villa game where Brat Brighton had a it was a stonewall penalty, and it went to VAR, and VAR ruled it away. That it was it butchered his shin. Yep, and there was one yesterday. Where- uh, Wolves against Arsenal, exactly the same thing, and they just waved it away. It was a stone one penalty, and it could have been a red card for, him, for Arsenal yesterday, and that would have been a totally different game than with the Wolves. Yeah, I, so Wolves, I are, Wolves are fighting for relegation. You know what I mean? It's, it, they go down at the end of the season because of that game. You yeah, know, one, they lose out thing, by two points. One thing's been stuck in my head since last week, and you know something? I've not, I've not thought of it the, the way. You, the way you mentioned it last week, that you know, VAR was you know, used VAR and the offside rule was brought in to stop goal hangers. And when you get when you're getting somebody minimal, his, his toenail is offside, 
it being given as offside rather than the, the old days when you used to get somebody just sta- you know standing at, at the keeper goal hanging. And I th- I think the the powers that be need reminding of that. I think we've lost. We certainly with offside, it's become far too important in the game. Um, you know, all, all the other stuff, you know, penalties, and balls, they're, they're getting the same. They're adjusting the rules to, to make the technology fit, you know, because they can't decide with the technology. They're sort of saying, right, well, we'll change the rules. That's not the way. The rules are there, and the technology should be made to fit them rules. And as you say, you know, I think people have just, you know, offsides become too important in a game now, whereas literally it's a simple rule. It's to stop goal hanging. And if the referee thinks the person's goal hanging, then he gives offside. If he thinks he, he, if he wasn't goal hanging and they tried to the defenders tried to play him offside, that's 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 cheating in a way. That's cheating. That's trying to make it look like he was goal hanging when he wasn't goal hanging. So let's let's flip it on its head. You know, if we revert back to stopping goal hanging instead of calling it offside, then the rule the rule's dead simple. It's really simple. I'm, I'm yeah. really, I don't know if you noticed that there's another one as well that annoyed me. Tony's first goal came from a goal kick that was a corner. Now that's a that was a clear and obvious header. Why was a corner not given? Why can't they say into his ear, got that wrong, mate, it's a corner? That would have took half a second. It, yeah, no, because we, we are seeing there was, there was a pe- a penalty we got uh, awarded. A few weeks ago, I forget now, and it took it took something like four and a half minutes, Anne Marie, mm. for, for it, you know, for it to yeah, because and... the game had carried on, and it took ages for the them to check it. It, yeah. it was a joke, but like you know, it's not just us; it affects. It's I don't know whether anybody watched the highlights of Leeds and Tottenham yesterday. I, I give up with football after yesterday, I must be honest. No, and I get that. But yesterday, Leeds were winning 1-0. And Tottenham equalised, Harry Kane. And never in a million years should that goal have stood because the Tottenham players, two of them, went in on the goalkeeper and pushed him into the back of the net. So he never had a chance of getting anywhere near Kane, Kane's effort. And yet, Far said no foul. And it was a blatant foul. It was just, you know, and I just think it's, it. I don't know whether they're afraid of making a decision now because they're getting so many wrong or whether it is, as we said last week, there's just a, a hint of corruption. Yeah, I know. I, I totally agree. So, Tony, I'm going to come to you on this because I, I know Riz is, but you are as well. You're a, you're a big rugby man. I don't mean as big as, as, big as Riz, obviously, but... <laughs> Wow, I'll leave my way out with it. I'll get, I'll, I'll get our friend Anthony on you, Riz. Well, that's a, <laughs> why, why is VAR getting it so wrong? Do you because do referees now they just don't want to make a decision, do they? Because they, they're they're relying on some idiot, excuse me, at Stockley Park now to, to bail them out of it. So it seems yeah. like they're not bothered about making decisions. No, and and do you mentioned rugby there, and and it's it seems very obvious in rugby because basically the referee still has control. He basically makes a decision and says, "Look, I'm not sure. I'm going to send it upstairs, and then they're going to make a decision." And the idea is that the person up there uh, that's obviously uh, doing the, the the TV monitoring has got to then make sure that the decision that the referee has given on the field is clear enough. If it's unclear. And I can and I can change your decision because I can see it differently. Then basically, it then gets overturned. If not, we stay with the decision of the referee. And it's so simple. Now there was one that was mentioned yesterday where I think it was that handball, to be honest. And they basically said because of the fact that um, it, it 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 wasn't clear and obvious in regards as far as they were concerned, and the guy upstairs or the guy at Stockley Park couldn't change that decision because he didn't have enough angles and it frustrates me because in rugby um there's so many angles and yet i think there's one or two angles that we don't always see in, in football um and if we had a sort of different angle then and the ones that we've got instead of the fairly straight lines that we tend to see in football um it would have seen that decision as possibly like we said before it could have been a penalty to us in the first half without a doubt they just needed to see one more angle and because the guy at Stockley Park couldn't see that extra angle, 
then basically he went uh, with the referee's decision. Um, so I like the idea that the referee is still in control of it, but I think that it, it, the referees in football are scared to actually offer it up. But the question is, yeah, sorry, sorry. who's giving them the angles? This is That's the question. Exactly what I've been saying, Tony, you are spot on. And either they're not showing all the angles, yeah. or they haven't got all the angles. And both is wrong. Yeah, I think they haven't got them. I really do. I'm surprised because um, with all the technology, we must be able to get them different angles, but they tend yeah. to show the angles that they want to show. And the yeah, big absolutely. difference is you can hear the referee in rugby, in cricket, yeah. say, I'm not quite sure whether yeah. there was a hand under the ball there. Could you just yeah. take that for me? And then they'll go round and then they'll show it in three different angles and you might see one angle where the lad did have his fingertips yeah. underneath the ball. No try. And yeah. everyone knows what's going on. I'll tell you what though, Stan. Stan, there, Stan yeah. there, there, we couldn't hear the, the referee yesterday, but I'm certain the referee could hear us with some of the decisions he was making. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Oh, but the thing I watched is, the um, I watched the uh, Eng England uh, Samoa game yesterday, rugby league, um, and there was a there was a try there, and he weren't the referee. The, the referee just basically thinks there might have been something not quite right. Yeah. So he he, he asks, "Can you just check?" Yeah. It's dead simple. It happens really quickly, and they talk to each other. Everyone can hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to explain it in the media afterwards because. You know what he's checking for. He's asking, "Can you check? You know, number number nine was onside. Yeah. Um, can you make sure it was touched down? I can't. I couldn't see the grounding. Can you check it? Okay. And 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 it happens really quickly. The the guy the guy in the, in the box. You know, we can see on TV and they can see in the ground the the angles and what we're checking. And the fans are part of it then. Yeah. Because there's no arguing. Well, you know, you look at it, and you think, oh yeah, God. And the crowd know, you can tell because the crowd are cheering. Because yeah. they know what he's asked to check. They can see themselves that it was grounded. Yeah. So the fans are already cheering because they know that it's going to be awarded. Why can't we just do that? It's not difficult. It's very simple. But it's yeah. as, no, on, on, in the game, they don't even show stuff on the screen that might be contentious in case it influences yeah. a referee's decision or something. You know, it's like... No, oh, no, it's oh. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, they don't think we're clever enough. They don't think we're clever enough, the fans there. They, they, they say, well, look, we're not no. entitled to see that. We're not, we're not clever enough to look at that yeah. because, you know... Uh, annoys me. There's no transparency. You know, no. they want to show you an angle and say, oh, well, we couldn't, we couldn't do it because you couldn't see the angle. And then you see the angle on match of the day. And you're like, what the hell's going on? I know. Not happy there. It's the transparency that really, really annoys me. I mean, I said last week, I don't think they're corrupt. But you watch it and the more and more it's going on, you're thinking it's hard to defend it. Stan, you're wrong. It's corrupt, isn't it, Amory? Yeah. It is corrupt. It's a way of controlling games without getting in tr into trouble. If you say that referees earn thousands of pounds on fixed matches, Mr. Clattenburg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but you've said, Stan, that you don't think it's corrupt and then you make a statement like that, so... I know, I know, but that's only because you're all saying it. I just don't want to admit it, I think. I so you're doing what a referee does, it just gets influenced by the rest of us. <laughs> hang, on, hang, on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, Stan. We're just going to VAR. VAR, so yeah. Take your decision. <laughs> hang on. No, so, something, something's got to change because, you know, it, it's like uh, Tony and Riz said, you know, with regards to rugby, it happens so simple. There's not as much money in rugby, but it doesn't matter because, you know, some of these decisions now, what the what VAR are making or not making, it is going to be the difference now between you know a club getting relegated, a club getting promoted, um, but even league positions and stuff like that. John, I, I think it was you who, who said it in in a tweet or something, or when we were talking in the week that the league, the Carabao Cup, VAR doesn't come into contention until the semi finals. But hang on, right. a, a team. You either have it for the whole competition or not at all, because a team in the in the knockout rounds, you know, early, say the last game, what's gone, something could have happened. I'm sure something would have happened somewhere where the team's gone out because of a, a contentious VAR thing. So, 
I just don't get it why they bring it in the semi-finals. That's trying to say, oh yeah, we're, we're going to look after the, the bigger clubs by by putting it in the you know forget forget the the Watfords oh. or, or whoever. You know, it's just going to ruin the game. So why bring it in at all? You know what I mean? Well, it's just you know so what? many it's... things they're getting wrong. Every game they're getting something wrong. So but they uh, don't actually come out and explain why they've done it. I know it's supposed to be clear and obvious error, and, mo and sometimes they, they just stick with what the referee's done on the pitch because they say, you know, he's not made an error, it, it's how he's seen it. I just, so I just, clear and I just want to make an apology as well to Anne-Marie's dad. VAR, they should just piss it off, Mr. Carthy, shouldn't they, Anne-Marie? Yes, yeah. they should. Sorry, sorry Anne-Marie's dad. It, normally, it's no swearing on here, but it, right. it, re it really is starting to infuriate me now. Stan, give Listen, us... The Camerabout Cup this week. There's no refreshing. They didn't want technology in football because they wanted matches to be done the same, whether it's a Sunday league game or the Premier. And they wouldn't bring in technology. Now they're bringing it in and they're picking and choosing when they want to bring it in. So... Well, the game this week, um, when the Carabao Cup, had no um, VAR. And I tell you what, it was so great to watch. It was. It was like the old days, wasn't it? Yeah. You yeah, knew when like the referee days. pointed, you knew it was a goal. He wasn't getting overturned. You could instantly yeah. celebrate. Split second, and you knew it was a goal. Then you go at weekend, and it's like, you, you, you're looking to see. Yeah. You're looking. And you, even then, you don't know whether it's being checked or what they're looking for or anything. So at what point do you, do you know it's a goal? Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, you, you're right, Riz. And I think, to be honest, as we've just alluded to before, I think if it was a little bit more transparent, if it was clear, we knew exactly what they were looking for. And fair enough, you know, you make you make a mistake and you've not seen something. And, and I get that, then that somebody actually overturns that particular decision. But what we must do is retain that the referee has the final say in that sense. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's, as we said before, 100%. what it is. Because otherwise, what's the point of him being there? We might as well have it done remotely. We might yeah. as well have the game remotely. And I think we've alluded to it before as well. And it frustrates me because um, when the ball goes out, we know it's not a throw in or, or you know, to, to, to the opposing side or whatever it is and they give it. And then it leads to something else. I don't know why they don't check things like that. It, 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 again, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a bigger as influence in a game. As we said before, the one where obviously it was either a corner, it ended up being a goal kick, the then result goal kick then goes forward, Tony scores, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you get situations like that. Well, that should be reviewed as well. And the joke yesterday, uh, and obviously I was watching on TV, so there could have been, uh, and 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 it worries me in some ways because it's going to happen where the game plays on and there's going to be a situation where we're actually going to have to give two penalties. Mm -hmm. Because yesterday, in that first hour towards the end, there was four shouts. And the yeah. referee was trying as best as he could to say, right, well, no, that one's not one. Right, while we're looking at the other one. And, and the game's still going ahead. So what happens then? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, yeah. the team goes down the other end, scores. You've then got to bring it back and you give two penalties. Yeah. Tony, <laughs> you know? Tony one, of my, one of my bugbears. We wouldn't score them both anyway if Maris took them. John, controversial. <laughs> one, one of my big bugbears with VAR as well is... When a player's attacking, when the linesman, sorry, lines person, we have to call them now, or well, yeah. we'll call them something else, they wait until the flag goes up. You know, they, somebody's going to have a severe injury. You know, <laughs> instead of the old fashioned, you know, straight up, offside. Now, well, it's, it's already it's, happened it's, once, hasn't it? Yeah. With, um, what's his name from Liverpool? Van Dyke. Van Dyke. Yeah. Yeah. It, didn't he get injured with Everton's keeper? Yeah, and he clashed with the keeper, Pickford. Oh, like yeah. the ball, John, they were going to give a decision, whatever, and, he, and the keeper comes out, takes him out, and that basically yeah. him out for six months or whatever it was. Then, <laughs> Wait, it? Well, hang on, hang on, then. So, Anne Marie, how, 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 how are we going to change the world of VAR? Cancel it. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to change the world of VAR because no one wants to care. No one cares about what the fans are actually thinking about it. Um, that. We just have to hope and hope that, you know, there's a bit of common sense used. And unfortunately, I think that that's lacking as well. There's enough fans to actually do something about this, though. But we just oh, need John. everybody to get on board. John, it's not happening. You've seen, you've seen this country the way we do things. Um, we could sort out a lot of things in this 
in this country with like with people power. Um, you know, he, we could stop the price of fuel going up by just basically saying, right, we're going to block every road. You know, we block every road for two days. They change it back, for instance. Football fans, what will happen is we say, right, we're um, we're boycotting this game. We're not going because of BAR, blah, blah, blah. So you'll get 4,000 City fans will say, no, yeah, you're right, you're back. Well, everyone will say, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. When it comes to match day, people yeah, we'll just sort of like, oh, well, I might, I might be one of those, you know, four, th- there might be only a 1,000 of us in, so I'll be able to say I was at that game. You know, people like, just like, go. Like Mansfield, I was there. You know, yeah. m- remember, there was it was the lowest attendance ever against M- Mansfield in the cup. Right? I, 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 I was in there. I seriously was. I seriously was there. I oh, spoke to people. It seemed like there was three hundred and seventy thousand people in there because everyone says I was there. I was there. If you, if you look at Twitter social media. There was seven hundred thousand at that game. Yeah, but, well, no, it is. It's the same. We can we, 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 we can actually take it to Parliament. If we get enough signatures to do a, a petition against it, it can actually get to Parliament and be actually talked about. Well, no, yeah. because all that'll happen is on Twitter, people will go, oh, look at him moaning, blah, 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 snowflake, blah, blah, blah. You, you know it's going to, that's all, That's how we are. That's how we to do it. John, John, it doesn't matter. They started two petitions to to get Erling Ireland back out of the country because it it's not fair and he's scoring too much. That would have gone to Parliament. Nothing yeah, but he's English. <laughs> you can't get him out of the country. He's born here. That's facts. That's not going to sway anybody. Why have you gone all like that now, jo- uh, Stan? It's ridiculous. thought he was going to tell a Bernard Manning joke. People coming on here spouting facts. Bit of blue for Dad. No, it is. Unfortunately, in life, nothing is going to be happening because people haven't got a backbone. At the end of the day, that's football, that's real life. It ain't happening. Because for every person who will want a protest, there'll be there'll be two or three that, oh, God, there's, there's a ticket going there. I'll go to that. So it's not happening. Think, yeah, and and the, powers, the powers that be know that within football that that's the case. Do. Don't they, Riz? Yeah. So at the end of, of the day, do. that's why it's not going to change. Okay, so happen. eventually then it's going to end up in court. Somebody's going to end up in court. Because one of the football clubs will take the referee association to court. Yeah, and because maybe that's what it's going to take, though, a football yeah, club to be. do that, you know what I mean, rather than, obviously, from a fan's point of view. But again, I don't mind, you know, new introductions if things evolve and we actually learn from the previous year, et cetera, et cetera, but we're still seeing no, we the same do. mistakes. And that's the problem. The only you know thing is any good something. that they brought in was goal line technology. That was that worked brilliant. Yeah. Simple. Very you know what you're up to, don't you? Yeah, 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 of course you do. Straight instantly, straight yeah. away, the referee knows whether that crossed the line. Yeah. And it's virtually instant, you know, his wrist yeah. buddies or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's instant. So how we can't come up with something, because the rules of rugby are more complicated than they are football. Yet they get it right in rugby, both codes, you know, yeah. more often than not. And it doesn't take long. So it's there's only one reason for it, for me. And it is because of... Yeah. It's a way to manipulate. I can't, I can't see. I can't see human error being as bad as this. I so it can only be. There can be one thing, and that's I corruption. Riz, I fixed fix the AR. Positions in the league. Fix the AR. What? Referees should grow a pair instead of going off the screen. Fixed. Yeah. As I say, there's only there's only Stuart Atwell, to my knowledge, who's actually gone to a screen and kept kept his own decision. So, you know, he's been slaughtered in the past, Stuart Atwell, but you no know, fair play to him for keeping, well, you know, keeping his gonads. It's supposed to be there to help the referees, not overrule them. Clear and obvious. It is. And it's like, it's like we've said before and what Tony said before, do it rem- do it remotely. Let's just let's just the, the referees. What does the, what does the A in VAR stand for? Arseholes. Assistant. Assistant. Thank you very much. I rest my case. Thank you very much. You turned into Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Having the confidence to stick with his wrong decision. Um, I must, I must say as well, 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 well done, guys. As well, we've gone off. What a terrible performance City had yesterday. Just to, just to moan about VAR. VAR. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It's taking over everything at the moment, isn't it, in regarding football. It's actually, you know, you don't talk about the games anymore. You talk about the refereeing. 
decisions and what's gone wrong and yeah. why don't you just let the game carry on as it should be? They've just totally ruined it. So totally a lot of people great. falling out with football and and giving up season cards, stopping going. They're starting to go now to lower leagues because there's, there's no, no VAR. There. You can yeah, because they're watching true football in that sense, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And you can have a pint on the terraces. Yeah. Interesting what you said there, John, about people you know falling out of love of football. It's not just VAR what's doing that with me. It's the time wasting as well. It, it really is. It's really starting to annoy me now to the point where you know, some of they're waste they're wasting my time as well. I'm, and I'm, yeah. I, I you know, no, you know, I've got. Two thing is, the thing is, Andy, when you get to now. your age, we get to your age. Time's very important. It's ticking away. The thing is, Andy, that brings it back to referees again. The referees should take control of that time wasting, and they don't. Maybe it should go to VAR. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they have to? Yeah. You only say taking time to take goal kicks. Yeah. I've, I've got an idea. Not, not in the 94th <laughs> minute. You should book him in the 30th minute. I've got an idea. Go on. This is all electronic as well. So it's, it's all, you know, it's, it's, it could be Bluetooth. Oh, go on then. What you do is, what you do is, <laughs> what you, do is you have um, like a little battery pack attached to the goalkeeper. And if it takes longer, <laughs> In ten seconds to deal it with it, gets him, electric shocks. <laughs> yeah, he gets electric shocks. So that what happens is then he'll kick it, he'll flip out, he'll fall <laughs> on the floor, and the, the attacker can come and score a goal. It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's entertaining. It's perfect, it's it? yeah. Unless it's, it's entertaining, unless it's it's it he'll miss it. <laughs> exactly, It'd be great. It it would yeah, it is. It's a break down halfway through. Yeah, here's one for you. Be great. Here's one for you, right? The match yesterday. I've never seen a goalkeeper like the Brentford keeper play so far forward. I thought we should have exposed that a few times, especially with Edison when he had the ball, because we know Edison can can ping one. I guess times yesterday, the Brentford keeper was at the halfway line. Well, and there was at one point, Ilkay had the, had the ball and the keeper was way out of his box and everybody shouted to him, shoot. Did he, he didn't play yesterday, Yeah, uh, He went off, for the, went off for the throwing, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did he play? I, did, I, did, I didn't see him play yesterday. He did, he played. So anyway, Anne-Marie, give us, give us a round up on the women. Well, they're on international duty at the minute. So there's not much to report, but we're still in good form as far as I can tell. You know, won again last weekend. Um, I think we briefly discussed it last week as well. Um, and, you know, all being well, we'll come back and start firing again. I think we yeah. should all go and watch the women's. There's no VAR in that. We're all on big Gazzy's blue and white army. There's, pl- there's no VAR, but there's plenty of bra. <laughs> and I would just like, I would just like to say as well, thank you for our sponsors as well this week yet again. Uh, three retro, the brilliant, brilliant Aqua Gas, and the phenomenal Prestige Car Repairs, where the repairs are prestige, but the prices are not. Lovely. Better do all right. Yeah, uh, yeah, so three retro. <laughs> yeah, three retro. So yep. yeah. Anybody else get anything before we skedaddle? I'd like to thank Tony for coming on because I think it's been a, a great addition to the uh, the podcast, to be honest. Absolutely. And, you know, it's so good to come back on again, Tony. No, hey, uh, I'm more than happy to come back on. I, I really appreciate it. And I always enjoy chatting with the lads anyway. So it's great because we do talk to each other at different points, really. We probably have not met each other that often, but mm-hmm. uh, we do talk to each other, which is great. So, yeah, more than happy to come back. I look forward to it. Again. No, we, I think we all follow each other on the Twitter as well, don't yeah, we? So yeah, 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 yeah. We communicate yeah. without really knowing it. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so I'd like to thank Sony for coming on, Anne-Marie, John, Riz and uh, Ray Winston there. Ray Winston. You know what you look like a bit there, Stan? You know what you look like a bit there, Stan? Phil Collins in the air tonight's face value album cover. Yeah. Oh, before, just... be, before we go as well, uh, I'd just also like to say that this is our opinions. None of us speak for at all City fans or anything, it's individual, individual opinions, what is always yep. respected. I do not speak for any City fan other Our than me, and I'm sure only. you guys are the same, because at the moment yep. it seems to be a bit of a, a Twitter fight, you know, uh, no idea who caused it, but, you know, 
you know, I just thought I'd put that on record. Hear that. We are. All... I speak for Anthony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, boy. Right. I'm on... <laughs> so, thanks, thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll do it all again very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye.